Hey everyone, today we're going to be talking about how to make your horse stand still. So we're going to cover things you can do on the ground to help them and also things you can do in the saddle to help them. But before we get started, why don't you share what your horse spooks at the most? So actually, Tucker just had an incident here where I had the reins around his neck, I was putting on the bridle, and I accidentally dropped the bridle. He absolutely lost it and freaked out. So he's a little traumatized from that. So today when I put the saddle on and I put the stirrups down, he kind of freaked out a little bit because he's like, the bridle's coming to get me. So comment down below what your horse spooks at and don't forget to like this video and subscribe to our channel if you find this helpful. So before we get into things you can do to help your horse learn to stand still, let's talk about why horses don't like to stand still. So it is not in your horse's nature to stand still. If you watch your horse in the field, you'll notice that they're always moving even when they're grazing. You can see that they're taking steps and taking a bite, taking a step, taking a bite. So horses are prey animals and the number one way they survive is by running. So for them, standing still or being in a situation where they're forced to stand still, like standing on a trailer or being tied up, this can cause them extreme anxiety because it's unnatural to them and they want to be able to flee if there's danger. So let's jump into our points and how you can help your horse learn to stand still. So whether your horse has a problem standing still under saddle or on the ground, the first place we're going to start is on the ground. Working your horse on the ground is the foundation for horse training, so this is a perfect place to start. So the number one thing you want to do when you first start working with your horse is to make sure you have a calm environment for them to work in. So like we said, a horse's number one instinct to avoid danger is to flee. So we want to make sure that they feel safe so they don't feel like they have to flee. So your horse is more apt to stand still in a calm environment, so we want to make sure we do our best to create this atmosphere. So something I've found that's really effective that I've done with the last few horses that I've trained is I start teaching them to stand still simply when I groom them. And what I'll do is I'm going to hold my lead rope in my hand as I groom them, and I'm just going to let the lead rope be loose, and it's basically just there to control them if I need to. But the thing is, if I'm out in the open, so I'll take the horse out to the ring or the round pen, and I'll just be brushing them, we're just relaxing, we're chilling, having a good old time, and it's the perfect atmosphere for the horse to learn new things. So all I'm gonna do in this situation to help my horse understand the stand still is as I'm brushing them, if the horse starts to take a step or walk off, I'll just jingle my lead rope so the horse will step back. So real quick, if you're not familiar with this groundwork exercise, all you do is you're gonna start by shaking your lead rope with a little pressure. And if your horse responds, you can immediately release the pressure so the horse knows that that's what you want. If you have a little bit more of a stubborn horse, you may have to increase your pressure and shake the rope a little harder for them to back up. So this is the exercise we're gonna to use to correct the horse from walking off at this point. And remember, we're just trying to keep a calm atmosphere. So as I brush my horse, and as they can have the opportunity to walk off because they're on the loose lead, I can correct them. And so this is the perfect opportunity for the horse to learn how to stand still. Like I said, we're maintaining a very calm atmosphere and I'm brushing them so it's something most horses like to do. Very quickly, the horse will learn that they're supposed to stand still as they're being brushed. In the beginning, if your horse does have a hard time standing still, once you brush them for a few seconds and they were good and still, then you can have them walk off. And this is just a reward to them to show them that once again, they don't have to get worked up and that this can be a nice experience and that you are gonna reward them for standing still. Just a side note, this is also a great way to teach your horses the ground tie. You know, I started using this method with Tucker on how to teach a horse to stand still, but before I knew it, he had learned to ground tie. So I had basically taught him how to ground tie without even knowing it, and I'm like, hmm, yeah, that's pretty useful. All right, so once your horse is confident out in the arena or in the round pen and you have them standing still, then you can go into the barn and do the exact same thing with them. The reason I like to be outside in the beginning is because horses are used to being outside. That's their natural habitat. So that's more of a calm atmosphere to them. That's the atmosphere they're used to. So sometimes when you bring a horse into the barn, they may get a little bit more wiggly and wanting to move around more. So that's why I recommend working outside first and then bringing your horse into the barn. So let's move on to our next point. 
So let's say you have a horse that's a little bit more hot-headed or they seem to just get really distracted and that's why they won't stand still. So this can be a horse that you tie up in the barn and suddenly the horse is whinnying and they're moving their feet around and they're looking for their friends and they're just not even paying attention to what's going on. So I'm going to give you guys some exercises you can do with these horses to help them, number one, calm down and number two, learn to stand still. So what I'm going to use with this is ground work once again, but lunging specifically. So this may be something that you want to take your horse outside to do uh, in case you have a concrete barn aisle. So the problem with these horses is that they're distracted. They're not focused on you and they're focused on something else. And since they're focused on maybe their friends out in the field or maybe commotion going on around the barn, they're going to be moving around because they're uncertain. So if they're winning for their friends, that means that they're nervous because they're away from their friends. So what you want to do is number one, get your horse's focus back on you. And as your horse starts to focus back on you, they're going to start to calm down and settle. So that's what we want. So in this video, you're going to see that I'm lunging Tucker here. And the reason I'm doing this is lunging your horse and getting them to move their feet is a great way to get them focused back on you. So if I ask my horse to move their feet and I'm controlling what they're doing, they're immediately going to have to focus on me instead of what's going on out in the pasture or something like that. Before we go any further, we have videos on how to lunge your horse in a round pen and also how to lunge your horse with just a lead line or a lunge line. So I'll put the links in the description below so you can check those out if you need some guidance when it comes to lunging. Another great way to get your horse focused back on you so you can start teaching them to stand still is by playing games with them. So I have two games in particular that I like to play with my horses and this makes it fun for them to learn how to stand still. And basically I just let the horse stand there and if they move out of where they are I wiggle the rope and make them go back to where they were. So simple, so easy. So that's one great way you can teach your horse this. And then of course, once the horse stands still for a while, I ask them to step up and walk forward just so that you get that relief. Another game you can play with these horses in particular that have a hard time because they're getting distracted is as I'm lunging them, I'll ask them to stand and halt. And if they can do that for a few seconds, then I'll have them walk off again. And so the more I work with the horse, the longer I can increase that time. So maybe I can then have them stand for 30 seconds before they walk off. So that's a great thing to play. In the beginning, your horse may only be able to stand there for a second. So that's just something you can use to make it a game and to also encourage the horse to pay attention to you. So from there, if your horse is really good at standing while you're brushing them, then you can tie them up and the horse should just stand there just as they've been taught. So now it's time to talk about the fun stuff. Let's talk about your horse walking off at the mounting block. Tons of people have this problem. It's super annoying. So we're going to cover it today. So before I even go to get on my horse, what I'm going to do is just play with them around the mounting block. I can do my two games I told you all about around the mounting block. I can lead my horse up to the mounting block, have them stand for a moment and then walk off. And this is just once again to get the horse focused on me before I go to get on. So let's say it's time to go to get on my horse and my horse walks off before I can even put my foot in the stirrup. What I'm gonna do now is immediately start lunging my horse around the mounting block. So one thing you can do is if you are uncomfortable lunging your horse with just the bridle, you can just slip a halter on over the bridle and that way you have a little bit more control. Um, but as soon as they start to walk off, I'm gonna start lunging them. And the reason I do this is because I want the horse to understand it's going to be more work for them to walk off than it is for them to stand at the mounting block. Like most animals, animals are naturally lazy. So horses want to do as little work as possible. So when you show them that one thing equals more work, they're more likely to do the other thing. So if I want my horse to stand still at the mounting block, that means I'm going to make them do more work if they run off. So let's talk about our next point. So not only do a lot of people have a problem with their horse standing still at the mounting block, they also have a problem with their horse walking off once they get in the saddle. So a very easy correction for this is to do a one rein stop as soon as the horse starts to walk off. So a one rein stop is also known as the emergency brake of horseback riding. The reason it's called this is because it disengages the horse's hind end which takes the power away from the horse and it takes the power for them to go forward. So that's why I'm going to use this today. It's super simple and easy and it's the first thing I teach any rider when they get on a horse. 
And all you have to do really is reach your hand down the rein and then bring the rein back towards your hip. I tell people to plant their hand on their hip as they hold the rein. So what this is going to do is make the horse turn their head towards your knee, which in turn will make the horse step their hind end around, or they'll just come to a stop. So this is a great way to teach your horse to stop and stand. And so this is what we're going to use with a horse walking off at the mounting block. So it's important to remember with anything, this takes practice. So your horse isn't going to immediately start standing at the mounting block when you start to do this. You're going to have to be consistent every time you get on that horse and it starts to walk off, you need to ask them to halt with the one rein stop. So once you've done this enough, then the horse will finally understand, oh, I'm supposed to stand here. So you can even work on this a few times as you ride. So I'll get on and I'll get off, get on, get off, just so I can work on the horse and help them understand what I want from them. Talking about standing still, can we just take a moment to see how good Tugger's standing? He's been standing here for like 15 minutes, not moving a muscle. I think he must be tired. So how many of you have been in the show ring, you're lining up to get your ribbons, and your horse is not standing still? They're dancing around while all the other horses there are just completely perfect, and you're like, oh my gosh, this is so embarrassing. Okay, so that's what we're going to talk about next. Those horses that like to dance around when you're on them and when you want them to stand still. So once again, it's important to note that your horse is probably dancing around because they may be getting a little nervous or excited. So just keep that in mind. And also keep in mind that forcing them to stand still in this moment may also cause something worse to happen. So in these situations, especially if I have a young horse, all I do is that one rein stop. Once again, I know I talk about it a lot, but it's very helpful. I just bring the horse's head back to my hip. If the horse wants to walk in a tight circle, they can. But for the most part, once the horse realizes that they can stop when I do this, the horse will come to a standstill. And if you do this enough, actually your horse will learn as soon as you start bringing your hand around to your hip, they'll stop. So anytime I start to train a young horse, that's how I teach them to stop from the beginning. For the first month or so, all I do is I just will bring my hand to my hip, and so soon, if my horse tilts their nose to the side, they know, oh, I'm supposed to stop. Another reason your horse may not want to stand still under saddle is because you're fidgeting with the reins when they're standing. So this is something I personally had a problem with, and Tucker had the hardest time standing still. So I did some personal reflection and I noticed that I always had my reins super short and I was always fidgeting with them when I wanted him to stand. So he'd be dancing around and like backing up or like side passing or something like that. And I'm like, why can't this horse stand still? I realized that if I just had my reins loose when he stood, then he would actually stand. So that may be one thing to consider. So if you're holding your reins really tight when your horse is supposed to be standing, you're actually telling the horse to back up. If you found this video helpful, please hit the subscribe button, and I want to thank you guys all for watching. Tune in next week for our next horse video.